go. Good morning, Cornerstone. It is great to be back with you. We did this last year, and we had so much fun, and we got such great feedback from you last year. We thought we'd do it again. We are really uh, excited to be here with you, and I hope you've had a great time with your family uh, this Christmas. I know for me, it is one of my favorite times of year just to slow down and to stop and to not just feel like I have to be rushed. And uh, as this is going to be released, I know a lot of us are going to be with our families. And so I hope that, um, again, that you've just been reminded of who God is in the midst of this Advent season and that it has truly been a sweet celebration um, of his coming down to earth and eventually his coming back. And I know for us, Advent has been very significant. And so, uh, again, we're all glad to be here with you and we'll share a a lot this morning. Uh, The main theme is just going to be reflecting on this past year. But first, we're going to start with announcements. Uh, And we, you know, at Cornerstone, we always have a lot of announcements. So, I'm going to get through those quick, and then we'll get into more of the content. Uh, The first is um, Kelsey, and uh, I know some of our young adult girls are going to be putting on a college women's retreat at the end of January, January 28th through the 30th. And so we're going to have sign-up information for that soon, if it's not up already, because we're recording this um, a couple weeks before this actually comes out. So I'm not sure if we're going to have all that information up, but hopefully... Uh, the retreat will be at Sheltoe Camp. We've got some more information on cost and uh, availability, and so I want to put that on your rain- radar. And then uh, the next announcement, uh, corporate prayer will be starting back in the new year. If if you don't already know, uh, we have corporate prayer on Fridays and uh, Friday mornings specifically at 7 a.m., and then on Sunday mornings from 9.45 to 10.30. And I know that's probably something that we'll even talk about as we – reflect on this past year. That's been a significant part of our church. So uh, I'll put some dates up on the screen when we're starting back for that as well. Uh, January 2nd, which will be the next Sunday after this comes out, we're going to be having a family Sunday as I know we'll have a lot of people still out of town. And so we're just going to have all of the kids up with us and worship that morning. So I want to put that on your radar. And then uh, Sunday, January 9th, we're going to be uh, re-getting together and just sharing some vision for the new year. And what I really love about this Sunday is it just gets to be more of a personal Sunday where our elders all get to share about their heart and what God has laid on our heart. And you can be praying for us, um, even though this podcast is coming out uh, after we've had our elders retreat, we're going to be getting together here this weekend to talk more about that as we look forward uh, to next year as well. And just want to put that on your radar, as that will be Sunday, January 9th. Uh, After that, we have, oh, and we're going to have a lot of exciting announcements that morning as well. I really can't wait to share, and again, just be praying for us this week. Uh, After that, though, uh, I want to update you guys, since it's the end of the year on our budget, uh, we we have some good news and some bad news. The, I mean, the overall good news over everything, uh, God has been so faithful to this church, and we just want to thank you uh, for giving. Um, at Cornerstone, we have just seen how God has continually provided um, through every season and every circumstance, and so we do trust him in the midst of that. But we also want to be honest with you about where we're at. So we're really far behind in our giving, but the good news is, is we're really far ahead in our expenses. So we've cut our expenses way more than we originally thought we were, which has been awesome. Um, And we just got an update about that a couple weeks ago. But we're also really far behind in our giving. So if you would like to give, I'll put a link on the screen online. We have the ability to give there. Or if you're the type of person that likes to uh, physically give, because I know, again, this is a Sunday where we're not meeting together, um, you can mail that in to our address, and I'll put that on screen. It's 219 South 5th Street, Williamsburg, Kentucky. Or uh, you can just meet us at the church and put it in our mailbox. That's probably an even easier thing than meeting us at the church. You can just put it in our mailbox, and we'll pick that up as well. But again, um, we really do appreciate everything um, that you guys have so generously given this year, and we do not want to take that for granted um, as it is also not the focus of who we are as a church either, uh, but we don't want to ignore being good stewards with what we've been given. Uh, and on that note, we are still working on getting new doors of the church. It has been uh, like everything, trying to get something new is always a process, and we have learned a lot of things about 
finding new doors. So we are looking to contact a new vendor and uh, find the right vendor for these doors. But if you'd like to give to that, we also have a renovation fund on our website. And so I'll put a link there if you are interested in giving to that as we have these really old doors. They're, they're probably close to original from when this building was built. And so we just want to make sure, again, we're taking care of what uh, God has given us. Um, and then kind of the last thing, we're excited for next year as I know most of our family groups at the end of this year have kind of shut down, which have been great to give us some time to be with our own uh, personal families, but we're really excited about launching a new family group next year, and we'll give you some more information uh, next Sunday as we're going to be blessing this group out. Um, and some of you guys probably already know, but that's that's great as well. Um, but we're really excited about looking at the new year, and if you have a different schedule next year and you need to switch into a different family group, that is totally an open thing. And one of the things I love about our family groups is that we have the ability uh, to be a part of different uh, parts of our congregation, and it's a sweet thing. We don't want to hold tightly onto one group. And so if you don't know what family groups are as well, I'll just give you a, a really brief uh, plug for it, I guess. Uh, we meet in homes every week and do meals together and go through the Word of God together. And it's just honestly probably the heart and soul of our church. And so if you've never been a part of one of those, we'd love to have you in one of those in the coming new year. I think that is all the announcements. Thank the good Lord. And... <laughs> Uh, we are going to start uh, just sharing uh, about this past year. And again, I, I said this last year on the podcast. I know I think most of us got to listen back again last year. And it's just been amazing, again, to hear and see God's faithfulness into this year and how different things are from last year to this year and how a lot of the same things are there as well. Um, but again, I've seen God's faithfulness over and over again. And so... We're just going to be sharing again about this past year, and so I hope it's enjoyable for you to listen, even if you're not a part of our church, um, just to hear some stories of how God has been faithful in this community and in our own lives. And so we're going to be uh, sharing about that, and again, really focusing in on the life of our church and um, in the life of Cornerstone, and we're going to share about many different things. We'll share about some personal stories and experiences. We'll share about maybe some of the sermon series and some of the things that um, God has just <laughs> been so timely and revealing to us. Um, and we'll share about so many different, so many different things. So, uh, and even some of these Gospel Sundays that we've got to have this year. That's been a, that's been a really sweet thing. Um, but then at the end, after we share about this past year, we're going to spend some time. Uh, just encouraging anyone that's listening and praying for you all as well. So uh, that's kind of the prompt. That's kind of the direction that we're going this morning. And I'm just going to let these guys kind of kick us off as we begin reflecting of, about Cornerstone and the life of our church in this past year. All right. Well, I volunteered to uh, to go next after Jordan. And so, um, man, I'm just overwhelmed and just really blown away one, how quickly this last year went. Um, and when we were sitting, talking, and kind of thinking through some of the things that happened, and I was, like, overwhelmed. We were like, was that last year or the year before, or was that this year? And then we're like, no, that was this year. And I know many of you, if you sit down and think about that, too, you might have the similar experience, like, going through it and looking at it all. And um, as I'm sitting here, and we are in our sanctuary, and it's empty right now. There's only the three of us and the Lord that's present here right now. But it's been amazing that this year there have been so many new people join our church, and like new families come in, and new children, younger, younger, and older um, people just coming. And for so long, when I first started attending Cornerstone many years ago. Uh, whenever we would have breaks or holidays or something like that, there would be very few people here, but that's not the case with our church anymore. Um, we actually have a lot more people who live here, community people who live and work in this area that attend our church, and I find that so encouraging, um, and it's awesome. And we still have so many college students, and that's awesome mm -hmm. too, and so we really are getting a lot more of, of a balance, I would say, and I yeah. think family groups is a big big part of that and just bringing people together. But I, I think that's something that's so encouraging that we've seen that's been consistent and just continuing to grow this last year, even in the midst of everything <laughs> in, in 2021, we are able to continue to grow together as a church. And so I'm really encouraged by that. Um, but I guess uh, when I, I went back and I was listening and watching the podcast that we did last year, 
and I noticed the, 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 the shoes and the jeans I was wearing, and I was like, oh, both of those have holes in them now. And they're really worn down and, and really worn thin. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a, yeah, you, you weren't expecting that at all. Yeah, well, and I've just been thinking about, as I think about 2021, just the year that it's been for me personally, uh, it's kind of almost like that. Like, I feel pretty worn down and, like, drug out. Like, I feel like, oh, my clothes have holes in them, my shoes are worn out. And uh, maybe many of you can resonate with that too, but it, it has been a, a busy yes, but just – Really, uh, I would say, like, an emotionally and spiritually and mentally heavy year, um, I would say, for me, uh, personally. And just so much going on, and, and the year's not over yet, and there's a lot more that can still happen. And uh, just as I've been thinking about that, it really, I don't know, it makes me think about Colossians, because mm-hmm. we did Colossians at the beginning of yeah. this year. Yeah, you guys can, Which can, is crazy. Yeah, yeah, if y'all can remember, we did Colossians before we did Acts, and yeah. so Colossians was after Peter, and... Colossians was just such this, this sweet, amazing time uh, of working through this book. And, and there were just so many truths uh, that are still, like, coming out. And just, I don't know, I'm just, just, in, thinking, in, just in thinking about Colossians and mm-hmm. really being mindful of God and all of it, whether, whether we're worn down or tired or maybe we feel rejuvenated and ready to go right now or launch into this next year. Uh, I, I love the fact that we did Colossians, and also now that we're in Acts, too. Uh, it's just really phenomenal. And so, um, I don't know, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to pass yeah. it over to Devon, and, and we'll <clears throat> jump into some more stuff. Yeah. Um, it's crazy, too, because I, I, I went back and listened to the previous podcast, and this year has felt like a really long year as well. Um, a lot of really awesome highs for me personally. Got married. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, awesome. Yeah, Landry's yeah. great. Marriage is awesome. I keep telling people I wish I was born married. I still stand to that to this <laughs> <Wow>. day. Uh, <laughs> she's great. But, <clears throat> but like, it's just crazy because, you know, we we did the podcast last year on, like, the, the tail end mm-hmm. of 2020, which was, like, big COVID year. And, um, and it was cool just how timely First Peter was at the time. Um, and even though Colossians was at the beginning of this year, which is still crazy to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just cool to see how how God has been so faithful over the last uh, over the last year. And again, just thinking about how how we have moved um, not like fully away from COVID, but from 2020, like God has still continued to to preserve His people and to preserve His church and to preserve His truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to see like the local expression of that in Cornerstone has been really encouraging. Mm-hmm. And then even by like seeing that through the faithful proclamation of the Word, like Colossians was huge because it was just emphasizing you know, how do we, how do we grow in spiritual maturity? Mm-hmm. Um, and then as we get into Acts, you know, just thinking about how, how the early church was born and how, how the early church did things. And, and um, I think it's been challenging for us as, a, as an eldership, just as we think through, okay, so what is church? How do we go about conducting uh, ourselves? How do we go about making much of Christ? What does this look like? Um, so it's been really cool mm-hmm. just to work through that and just to see how, like, in a lot of ways, we're like, okay, like, the Lord's been faithful in, in, in leading us this way already, but then also just being challenged with, okay, well, maybe we can do this better, right. uh, so that's been really cool, but I guess just, like, as I think back on on this last year, I just really am reminded of God's faithfulness, and just his sustain, like, how, how he sustains, because I know, like, early on last year, I was helping coach, and mm-hmm. just doing a bunch of different things, and I was, like, really spread thin, mm-hmm. um, and looking back, it's like, man, I don't know how I did that, but by God's grace, mm-hmm. Um, we did that. So I know that we're going to talk about this a little bit more and, and get into some more specifics, but it's just cool thinking back of God's faithfulness. Mm-hmm. And um, again, just like listening to the podcast last year, I know it, <clears throat> like it just challenged us to look at the broader picture of God's redemptive work. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just encouraging now being further along, seeing how like COVID to some might have been like the, the end of the world or, mm-hmm. or whatever that might have been, but like seeing how God has preserved us throughout and like seeing how we have uh, continued to be brought out has been really, really, really encouraging. Mm-hmm. Um, and how the Lord has used it for, for all of us to grow in Christ likeness has been really, really encouraging. Yeah. I was, I was recently at a Q&A and there was an <laughs> author and he was just talking about uh, when you're able to remove, I guess with, with time, you're able to, to look back at different events or things that happen. And if you're far enough removed from it, you're normally able, I guess if you're a believer, to see like God's arch of, of grace in it, like from beginning to end. And I think 
as we're looking back and, and seeing like those seasons that we're in, like we have enough perspective now and enough time has passed where we can see, you know, the Lord working like in that. Because, you know, in, in the middle of that, we were in Peter and like declaring, hey, the Lord is sovereign. He's in control over this. And like that's kind of like in the middle of a lot of those situations and now kind of being removed a little bit from them. We're still a lot of things with COVID, a lot of things just with the world and uh, elections and government and just different mm-hmm. stuff like that. But we're still, we're, I think we're removed enough now we're able to kind of see the Lord's working and all of that. And um, I don't know. I did want to talk about maybe some highlights of this year. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And, I love that. Uh, and so we, we have many, actually. <laughs> There's a lot. We're looking back yeah, and, we're, and, and hopefully you all can think of many of these too. And if we don't mention them, that doesn't mean they're not important. Mm-hmm. We probably just didn't always remember them. So uh, I was thinking about uh, some of the baptisms that we had mm-hmm. this year, which yep. is really awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay-Z's really <laughs> stuck out to me in particular, and just I love just hearing her just boldly declare uh, like the gospel whenever she was shared, and it was really powerful. Uh, I, I love that. Um, That's Jordan Zucchini for yeah, anyone that doesn't. Jordan Zucchini, <laughs> so there we go. And then we, and then we also had, had Sabian, and yeah, it was yeah. phenomenal just to hear some more of Sabian's story and then him take that step. And I know that many people have, have, have worked with and mentored Sabian through that. And that was mm-hmm. phenomenal for him to be here. And there was such a large crowd that came to watch Sabian too. And just what a testimony. And then also Sydney most recently uh, being baptized too in the same thing. And just the Lord's just faithfulness, like overall in the midst of everything, like when you don't anticipate uh, somebody deciding, no, I want to, I want to follow and, and baptism. Then it comes out of nowhere and you're like, right. what, this is awesome. Like I never, like, not that you didn't see it coming, but it's just like, oh, there's like all of a sudden this great, mm-hmm. this great light that comes in the darkness in the midst of it all. So that's great. Yeah. You know, it's being highlights for me, a big highlight this year. I had this card that I found in my notes and it's probably from 2018, I'm guessing. It was like a strengths and weaknesses card of Cornerstone, and it has opportunities and threats and all these different kinds of things. It's sometimes SWOT analysis is what they call it. Uh, But we did this for Cornerstone, I think this was back in 2018, and one of the weaknesses on here uh, was true community amongst adults. And that, to me, was kind of mind-blowing because I I saw that literally last week, and I was thinking about how in uh, 2019 we were really – getting family groups more established, but then 2020 came and again kind of split up our church community just because of the reality of COVID and then all the transitions that were just happening. And I can confidently say in 2021 that I feel like true community amongst adults is one of our strengths. And I am so thankful for that. Like I would have, again, when I first came to this church um in on staff back in 2016 that was just something that was non-existent Mm -hmm. and uh, just to think how many friends and um, people i would basically call family Mm -hmm. at this church now because of um, just the reality of being able to meet together again and have family groups is it to me is is a huge highlight just seeing um that note from then to now and how that's changed so i don't know to me that's that's a that's a major one that that sticks out that I couldn't have imagined literally just a couple years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I would say another highlight and it's really cool. Cause again, thinking back of uh, <laughs> last year's video, we were just talking about launching prayer groups. Um, yeah. And it was just cool to even see, cause initially it was like 10 to 10 30. And now we do a Sunday mornings from nine forty five to 10 30, which is awesome. But then even having it Friday mornings at seven um, and just seeing how that has grown. It's just really encouraging too, because we do want to be a church who prays. Um, and just to be a community who prays um, and seeks the Lord and, and submits ourselves to the Lord. So I think that that's another another high. Um, and obviously, I'm kind of on like this whole marriage bent. But even seeing like the different uh, the different marriages that have happened in our church mm-hmm. as well has been really cool. So um, like Connor and Sarah Shelley now, which is crazy, cool. and um, Abby, <laughs> Mike and Abby Linton, you know, like is awesome. Um, and just seeing the Lord's faithfulness in that and how. Like marriage really is a picture of the gospel, so it's just really cool, and just like like seeing that within all of their ceremonies is, is just really encouraging. Yeah, I'll say too, you going off of the weddings, like a highlight for me in in all the weddings this year was just to see how much of our church was really a part of them, you know, just showing up, helping out, pitching in. Amen. It, I mean, I can <laughs> I can I can confidently say all the weddings were just like exciting. You know, there's a lot of 
weddings that I think we see in our culture that I was like, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> but no, I can confidently say like, it's just exciting to me to see all these marriages and how God's going to use them and mm-hmm. uh, for his glory. So that, that to me was definitely a highlight to see the church in the midst of those celebrations. So. Yeah. Well, I was going to change subject slightly. Do you want to go before I do? I do have one more. Well, one more. Well, I've got classic highlights. step back is oh, what okay, we're doing. Okay. All right. Well, okay. So, so <laughs> well, some highlights in, in going off of, you know, building off of, you know, that might have been a weakness then, but a strength now. And, and even just thinking about some of the things that we brought back, like we're able to do this year, such as gather together for yeah, our um, Easter party, and Easter gathering. Didn't get to do that last uh, year. Yeah, yeah. And so Resurrection Sunday and just like come together and celebrate at Wayne's house. That was yeah, phenomenal yeah. to be yep. able to do that again. And, and then also we had another potluck this year yeah, and uh, worship on the porch, oh, yeah. bringing those things back together and and even uh ladies night and it was awesome. the start of men's night That's this right. year too and we so yeah. uh lots of things to build off of and to continue to launch into the next year of these ways that we're able to connect and grow mm-hmm. together and have fun laugh be together yep. get to know each other um karaoke that, night <laughs> there we go oh yeah karaoke <laughs> night oh oh funny costume oh, super, super bowl party pr- super bowl party all yeah. brought it yeah Jeez. it's crazy after 2020 now. Yeah. Yeah. just everybody coming back together and 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 the longing for that and i think that's what we've seen so much is just the longing for people for that community for you know uh discipleship for truth you know for for being a a family uh Mm -hmm. and those are those are some of the core things that we stand for and want here at cornerstone so did you have another highlight i was gonna say he is risen after you said uh (laughs) hey i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pick say it say he is risen he is risen Mm -hmm. indeed i thought you're gonna repeat your make him repeat himself (laughs) like he was gonna have to respond to himself that would have been great he's risen indeed (laughs) um I won't, I won't be that cruel. But. Echo. Um, no, another thing I was going to say is just a highlight, but just thinking about Gospel Sundays mm. um, mm-hmm. and just like how that is a break mm-hmm. uh, in between, especially because we've been go- going through Acts since mm-hmm. April. <laughs> but yeah, like it's just really encouraging again, just to be reminded of mm-hmm. the truth of the gospel and just realizing that that really is our foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and then like full pun intended, but that is the cornerstone of the Christian faith and it's not just something that we graduate from. It's not just something that we end on. It's not just something that we hear once and then we're like, cool, I got it. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just cool to see how the gospel motivates us and compels us to live godly lives. Mm -hmm. Um, So just like in the midst of our sermon series, like stopping and just being reminded of the gospel is just so cool. And I've, I've really appreciated that as well. And just seeing how, how we hit like different facets of it as well, whether it be the adoption piece or the justification piece or whatever. Um, Yeah. And I think it also just promotes us to be, a body uh, who just contemplates on the beauty mm-hmm. of Christ and his work mm-hmm. and what God has done mm-hmm. uh, for us and just something that we don't deserve. So it's just really cool. And, and again, just pointing us to the living hope that we have, um, which was a big theme that we had last year yeah. and that we continue to have this year and hopefully throughout the rest of our lives as believers. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I would say yeah. that I, I one for one, need those Gospel Sundays <laughs> as just a continuing reminder. You know, we, we take communion every week at Cornerstone, which is unique to some churches, but mm-hmm. um, but we do that because we need that reminder. And, you know, I, <laughs> as, the, as the hymn goes, prone to wonder, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, and I don't want my heart to get so hard that I'm like, I'm tired of hearing of the gospel. And said, so, like, I should really rejoice in that. And so... Uh, that that's been good. That's been really, really good to to be intentional about that and, and about the truths of the gospel. And so I'm excited to even look at the gospel from different angles and perspectives in in this next year when we do take those breaks to really to really dive into that. So yeah. I'm gonna pull a Devon here and say, "Yo, let's talk about the Book of Acts." <laughs> the Book of Acts. My Sorry, goodness. I was like, my, my mouth with this mic. <laughs> you just <laughs> got <laughs> smacked. <laughs> Were you, were you going to say something? No, let's talk about the books of Acts. But okay. I, I did I did think maybe we could talk about maybe some more of the lower moments of this year. Yeah, we can definitely talk about uh, that, that too. Is, that's also like in the book of Acts, though, because there's lots of high We can talk about both. Yeah, so yeah. Let's jump into Acts. Yeah, let's, let's, can... let's talk about that because we started that, I think it was May, because we finished Colossians in April, like middle of April. <laughs> so it might have been late April, beginning of May. And I just remember thinking when we are starting it, I was very excited about it uh, because we are – in a lot of ways, I think, trying to figure out what does it mean to be the church again. Mm-hmm. And um, and my excitement for it 
then is uh, just as much now. It's, it's lived up to the hype, right? God's word always does, but sometimes you you always wonder as you dive into a book, like what it's going to produce. And and again, I I can say confidently just how applicable it's been to our season in this church, and it's been continuing to shape how we think about how we do church and how we um, live the Christian life together in community uh, under God. And it's been so cool just to see the examples um, of people before us that have gone through and, and, and done this and, and ask all these hard questions about uh, what does it mean to be um, life and community full of the Spirit and proclaiming Christ boldly, which has been kind of our whole series theme uh, without hindrance. And so, yeah, I'd love to hear any any thoughts that you guys have. And yeah, we can definitely, I, de- I don't want to miss the low lights either, like you were saying, Ben, because there's definitely a lot of difficulty that we went through as well. But I'd love to hear what you guys have gleaned from Max. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. Um, and I guess it's also cool because I'm just finishing a church history course. But as we've started working through the book of Acts and even get, getting to the place where we're at now where the Gentiles have heard uh, the gospel, it's been really awesome and thought-provoking um, just to think about the broader context of God's redemptive work. And just like, and I guess what, like one of the things that I mean is that like I, I, I would take it for granted that, that I'm a Christian, you know, and that like in Georgia, <laughs> I became a Christian and now here we are in Williamsburg, Kentucky, and we're all Christians. And like, it's just really cool to see how God has been sovereignly fulfilling his promises through his word. And we see that. And then also how he has been sovereignly calling his people. And here we are a few thousand years later and we're like reaping the benefits of that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's all because of God's grace and God has providentially orchestrated that. And like, as we've been working through the book of Acts, I don't think I was initially expecting that, uh, especially to be contemplating on that so much. But um, it's just been really cool to think about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause again, I think it, it could be really easy for us to get really narrow uh, narrowly focused on like, okay, like here we are, but then like taking a step back and it's like, okay, well let's, let's think about Christians in, in all of America. It's like, okay, cool. Let's take a, a broader step back. Let's think of Christians now in like Canada and South America. Okay. Like now let's take a broader context. Now let's look at Christians around the world and even what happened with Afghanistan, for example, um, <clears throat> that's a low, you know, but just even thinking about how God has been faithfully working there and is faithfully working there today. Um, is just really cool. And then even like taking a, a, a step back, like not even just geographically, but now throughout time, how God has been working to call his people mm-hmm. throughout time. It, like, it's just really encouraging. And I initially I was not anticipating on like thinking about that as we've been, as we've been working through Acts. But I think that that's been one of the primary things um, you know, the Lord has really challenged me on. And it's like, man, you know, praise God that, that we can be a part of, and like that we can be a part of, um, a part of his redemptive plan. And like God is still active in, in, in calling his people to himself. And until Christ returns, that's just a reality. So, uh, so the challenge then is, you know, how can we be faithful to that right now? And how can we also do that with an attitude of gratitude? Uh, just to kind of be, be cliche, but you know, with an attitude of gratitude that the Lord has called us, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like, like it's just really cool. And it's kind of been <clears throat> awe inspiring. That's great. Yeah. Uh, that makes me uh, think about in Isaiah chapter nine, verse seven, so that's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7. Just the beginning part of that just says, there'll be no end to the increase of his government. And even just like thinking about, uh, it, like, they're just, it's spreading. Like the gospel yeah. like mm-hmm. hit the kingdom spreading that Christ came to be king over, and it has spread so much. And mm-hmm. uh, it's neat, and Devon, you've done a great job bringing that up, that uh, it's here in Williamsburg, Kentucky, or it's like in these different corners of the world that it has continued to go out and spread. And I think... Acts is, is phenomenal. I know we really, we wanted, we wanted our body to be more familiar with the church history, like the history, like the beginnings of it, what's it all about. And, and as we've been going through and we've been meeting these different people, mm-hmm. hearing these different stories, we're being challenged by the testimonies, uh, we're being uh, challenged by, okay, there's the Holy Spirit and it's alive and moving and doing these different things. And like, what, what do we do with this? Uh, there's these different giftings and, and, and uh, miraculous events that are taking place. And, 
Uh, and there's people being converted and changed. Mm-hmm. And, and like you said, now we're, we're the Jews, or excuse me, the Gentiles. They, they are receiving the gospel, and it's mind-blowing, and it's awesome. And I'm not Jewish, so I'm very grateful that the Gentiles <laughs> are, are included in this. And uh, it's, just, it's awesome. And Devon, I know that you and I were having a conversation, and you said something that was pretty profound. And I think we're going to see this more and more as we look into it, that Oftentimes, we, we, when we're looking at the book, book of Acts, we, we want the power mm-hmm. of Acts, mm-hmm. but we don't want the persecution mm-hmm. that kind of follows that mm-hmm. power, like being in those giftings of that. And, and very, very early on, you know, when, when Acts 8 is Stephen, you know, he, he was doing miraculous signs and wonders, and he was a, a chosen seven. He was serving tables mm-hmm. and, and just a man full of grace. And he was killed. He was the first martyr because of what he believed. And, and so, and we are seeing more and more uh, as we progress that the per- persecution is, is going to continue to arise. And, and it makes me really think about Proverbs. Uh, and this is Proverbs 28, I think, 31, um, where it's, it says, you know, th- essentially the, the wicked are an abomination to the righteous, but the righteous are an abomination to the wicked. And in, in that, thinking about how, like, these, uh, I'll pull it up to make sure I was correct. 2028. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. 2028? 20, 28, 28. Oh, 28. Yeah. That's the last verse, so yeah, you're, you're, yeah. You're, you're, you're on it. Oh, I was thinking, sorry, 29, verse 27. Oh, I, okay. And so it says, the, the unjust man is abominable to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way is abominable to the wicked. Okay. Yeah. And, and just like and thinking about that with all that we're doing, especially like if we're called to live righteous lives, you know, later in the New Testament it says, all who desire to live godly lives will be persecuted. Mm-hmm. And, and so we're seeing that more and more. And I think, you know, even more today, just the different things that are happening in our world um, you know, he who is righteous is, is going to be an abomination, abominable to the wicked, and they're not going to like mm-hmm. it. And we see that's what's going to take place here, even though these messengers are bringing the gospel, they're bringing the good news. They're saying, hey, God has made a way for you to have peace with him through Christ. This is great news. And that's really offensive to some people. Mm-hmm. And we're, as we're diving into this, we're going to see how very much, how very offensive it was mm-hmm. to the people in the early church, and it's just as offensive today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. That's really good. Yeah, that's that's great. Um, well, kind of thinking, you know, one of the things in Acts that I love and we've kind of talked about in a lot of our preaching meetings is how a lot of it is narrative and how a lot of it is literally just stories of the people and what they're experiencing. And this kind of goes off of what you were talking about earlier, Ben, of like maybe some of the difficult things that we've experienced in the life of our church because that's what I love about all the scripture is it doesn't shy away um, from the beautiful things and the awesome things, but also uh, the brokenness in the midst of that and uh, the realities of that. And so I know one of the one of the things for me that was very difficult was at the beginning of the year in, in April when uh, Chris Rolfe passed away. And uh, that was that was a difficult um, situation because Pam and Chris have been a part of our church for a long time and, and they had already moved to Louisville. And um, just hearing about the story of, of how he how he died was very difficult, and so we want to continue uh, to pray for their family and uh, reach out to them. And I want to encourage anyone that knows them to continue to do that and and grieve amidst that loss. But I know that was um, definitely a marker earlier this year um, that was difficult. And then I'll just mention this one too because I know you guys will probably share about both. Is when uh, Millie passed away, and she's been a part of our congregation for a long time, and and she was, you know, even currently in Williamsburg, so this wasn't someone that um, was even away from us in another city, and um, just the the example that she left behind and the legacy that she left behind of uh, following Jesus, as we believe both um, Chris and Millie are with Jesus, um, and we we trust that, but those were, those are difficult things, and again, um, Scripture just continually has revealed, and I've been thankful that we've just been going through Scripture the way we have been. Not It doesn't shy away from the difficulty, and it, it doesn't shy away from saying grieve with those who grieve and mourn with those who mourn. And I know that there's so many other um, experiences in the life of our church um, that have been difficult, and we don't want to ignore that. And for anyone listening that's not even a part of our church, we don't want to ignore um, the difficulty that's going on in your life. And so... Um, I know those are some 
things that we continually process and we don't want to forget and uh, we don't want to ignore because I think that's what our culture tries to do is tries to cover things up that are difficult and act like it never happened. And so we still want to uh, reach out to those people that we know that are going through difficulty and loss and pain and um, continue to support them and love them well. So, yeah, do you guys have any further thoughts on that? or whatever? <clears throat> No, I mean, and those were those were very difficult times, and I think you you said it well. Uh, you know, and there are probably more that we don't know of that that weren't shared, and we do continue to desire to be a, a spiritual family who's united together that can walk with um, each other through those different things. And it was in the light, in, in the midst of that darkness, it was neat to see the church and the body come together to support, love, and care, and help. Uh, and, and meet needs of those of those families, and we want to continue to do that. We don't want it just to be a, a, like a one time thing. And so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 those are those. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else on Acts or? <sighs> There's so much yeah. that I could probably <laughs> ramble on about it. Well, <clears throat> I'll say I'll say something. So, mm-hmm. something new this year. I'm normally not a person who listens to podcasts because mm-hmm. I'm I'm always like 10 years behind in time so, <laughs> so like uh, I didn't really know what Spotify was until this year and like other things like that and so like opened I'm, up your world yeah I, you know I'm continually blown away by these things that <laughs> have existed for a long time so uh that's that's just kind of me <laughs> um but uh, a, a podcast I did listen to this year was about mm. another church. It was mm. called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. And it was very mm. challenging in a lot of ways uh, just uh, because whenever I was a college student, uh, Mars Hill was become, it was a pretty large, pretty famous mm. church and stuff. And, and just like listening through, listening through this, um, I was just kind of really overwhelmed with gratitude <coughs> for our body, mm. um, even the smallness mm. of our body and the auth- authenticity here and, and the accountability that we have uh, being elder-led and, and really having people that can that can speak into each other's lives and we can challenge each other, rebuke each other, encourage each other. And it's been, it was really good uh, to listen to because sometimes I desire, personally, like I desire like fame or let's have like five services at Cornerstone and like all this, let's let's be this big thing. But like that's really, and I'm grateful the Lord hasn't answered those. I'm also grateful. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no. And so barely handle one (laughs) service. (laughs) Yeah. So I think that sometimes we, we want to get caught up in like these things that the culture is really promoting and it's easy to jump on that train and stay on it and keep going. But it's been neat to see the sovereignty of the Lord kind of hold different things in check. And so what we might think is like not a blessing is actually really a blessing. And so, and I really, as I've been listening to their stories about that, like it really, it grieves me. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, I like I mourn that and, and, I, and I think about them and, and I've prayed for them too, the different church leaders there and all that. And um, just like overwhelmed, but like just really gratitude like so much gratitude for our body and our situation like through that like when you hear listen to somebody else's story and it it sparks like gratitude in you and so um that's been something that's been different and interesting for me this year so Mm -hmm. yeah that's good yeah i agree that podcast was um it was it was definitely a gut check of like okay are we really seeking after god's kingdom or are we seeking after our own kingdom because i think um in ministry work and whatever work you're in, uh, as Christians, we can quickly um, miss the mark of where we're going even, and I think it's a good good heart check for all of us as Christians just to really look in our own lives, even though we might start uh, with the right heart of Mm -hmm. seeking after the Lord, things can quickly change, and I think that was uh, a lot of the challenge in uh, listening to that story and the importance of the way that we live our lives uh, really does affect the people around us, even though God is sovereign over all of it. Um, the decisions that we make really do have an impact on uh, the people that we're around. And so 
I, I agree that that definitely was a an unexpected <laughs> podcast too. I would say uh, that yeah. that came out at the time that it did. So I, I was real surprised yeah. because <clears throat> there were multiple people in my family yeah. group, plug in for family mm-hmm. group there, there you go. that were listening to it and talking about. It. I was like, I need to know Check what this, this out. Is, yeah, is that's going always on. Me and, too. Yeah, and so um, yeah, Devon, what were you gonna say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to, because I've not listened to the podcast. I've heard a lot about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Time, man. But uh, I will say, it. you know, it is interesting because even like hearing what y'all were mentioning too, it's been cool to think about as we've studied through the book of Acts, for Mm -hmm. example. um, And there's this like Latin term that I really like. It's called semper reformanda. It means always reforming. Say it again. Semper reformanda. Like, so the church should be always reforming, like submitting ourselves to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Um, Like always submitting ourselves to the word of God. And if we think that, it's like, okay, like, we're coming up with this. Like, is it, is, like are we going to submit it to the That's Word good. of God? Um, and just even shameless plug for this upcoming Friday. Uh, you'll hear a little bit about that. But anyway. Wait, which, which Friday? Because we're uh, recording Friday, this. I'm sorry. I thought Sunday. <laughs> Sunday, sorry. Sunday. January 2nd. January 2nd. Okay. Yes. Cool, is that cool. Sunday? Yeah, yeah. That's Sunday. Yeah. That's Sunday. Sunday, January 2nd. Okay, yeah. Cool. We'll be talking about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, so continually submitting ourselves to the Word of God. But even thinking about, because um, Ben, I think it was you who mentioned you know, like, like, how are we expanding the kingdom of God? Are we, are we expanding the kingdom or are we trying to build our own? Mm-hmm. But like, as we've worked through the book of Acts, you know, we've, we've seen how God has prescribed to expand his kingdom. And that's through the proclamation of the gospel. Um, and I was just even thinking too, um, and I hope that this is something that we continue to grow in, but, you know, as, as, as elders, our, our charge is to uh, equip the saints for the work of ministry. So, like, you can't and we can't expect us to do everything, right? Um, which is another reason why we want to have these Gospel Sundays is so people can uh, learn to be able to holistically and biblically articulate the Gospel because the Gospel is God's power for salvation anyone who believes, first the Jew, then to the Gentile. Um, so, I don't know, like, like, like I, was, I was just thinking again about the book of Acts, maybe yeah. like transitioning there as well. It's like we've we, we've seen that this is how God is, is is advancing his kingdom. He was doing that then and he's doing that now. Mm. Um, so then how can we be a body? How can we be a church who who is actively being on mission for the sake of Christ mm-hmm. um, and not seeking to advance our own mm-hmm. kingdom? Mm-hmm. But we're, we're, we're trying to make much of Christ. We're trying to be about God's mm-hmm. God's work. We're trying to be about uh, seeing people repent and turn to Jesus. Um, yeah, I don't know. So yeah. it was just it was just cool. That's I was great. just thinking about that. No, I'm actually really glad you mentioned all that because one of the things I wrote on here, and it's basically word for word uh, what you said. I was thinking about last year. We talked about this last year, how our world is more divided. Um, <laughs> ben, Ben, with the background music, he's just trying to set the theme here, set, set the, the tone. tone. You might have not even heard that. I don't know if you heard it, but it was it was a ringtone uh, for anyone that's just listening and not watching. Um, but one of the things I wrote down that we talked about last year is how divided our world is on opinions of how things should be. And one of the things that I'm really thankful for, and again, this is kind of a low light and a highlight at the same time. Uh, one you know, our, our world is still divided on a lot of different things. But a highlight for me is I really do believe our church is trying to stand on God's word more than ever and not get caught up in the things that aren't biblical and the things that uh, we might have a lot of different opinions on, but really trying to stand firm and submit to the truth of God's word. And and I've seen that in just the unity of this body. Like I, I've seen that over and over again where uh, we have so many different people from so many different backgrounds really trying to come and say, you know, at the end of the day, it's not about all these different things we have or haven't experienced. It really is about how can we submit to God's word and how can we uh, really believe what is true? Uh, yeah, and live it out. And, and I have, I mean, again, I literally wrote that down as like uh, a highlight for for the year and we're continually trying to be refined and i'm excited now for january 2nd since that's going to be even a big part of that's going to be such a great way to start off the year yeah that'll be sweet to submit to yeah submit to the word of god in that regard and it's not the whole thing just a part of it sorry okay yeah yeah i know it's not the whole thing yeah yeah yeah. no i'm glad yeah i'm excited no it'll be great um but yeah i don't know that i'm i'm glad that you mentioned that so Well, <clears throat> we've been doing this for about 45 minutes, yep. so we can uh, yeah, okay. start trying to land. Wow. 
Uh, and with that in mind, just and thinking about next year and maybe just offering some encouragement for next mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> something really interesting is taking place at my house right now. So my uh, <laughs> oldest son, Benaya, he is six years old. And it's he doesn't have any Christmas presents under our tree right now. Mm-hmm. However, his brother and his sister and his mother and his father does, actually. <laughs> and and he, it's been asking every day, he's like, you know, where's my presents? Am I going to get any presents? Did you give me this? Like, And he he's like, uh, he was a little upset yesterday, like really fearful, almost in tears over the fact that he didn't have any Christmas presents under the tree. They're all up in, a, in our closet and stuff like that. Like We need to wrap them and put them under there. And so it wasn't intentional. It's just, they're, they're, we just <laughs> haven't done it yet, right? But but just seeing uh, just how fearful he is mm-hmm. o- over this. And and so I would, and I resonate a lot with him because then I'm like, Lord, are you going to do this? 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 Are you going to be faithful? <laughs> like, what's going on? Come on. Like, my brother and sister have this. Are you going to do this for me? Like, what's going on? Like, oh, and, and, just, and just processing through that. And, and as I think through to next year, and as we're able to look back and see just how sovereign the Lord has been and how faithful he's been and how good he's been this past year, you know, I think that we can, we can trust that he's going to be faithful again in 2022, come what may. Um, and by no means am I like promoting like he's gonna give you every gift or anything like that. N- not not what's not whatsoever. But like you know, as Benaya's dad, I have like his best intentions at heart and mind most almost all the time. <laughs> I'm not God, so I'm not, not I'm not I'm not perfect in that. But but you know, um, and so we had to like both my wife and I had to like you know place our arms on his shoulders and be like, hey bud, do you trust us? Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm. wait, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna work out for you. Just. Mm-hmm. Just wait, you know, and, and I feel like oftentimes the Lord has to do that with me, just hands on the shoulders and just like, hey, Ben, just wait. It's going to be all right. Like, read my word. Trust is, is gonna, it's going to be all right. And, and so that would be like one, one thing of encouragement I would just kind of want to say that like going, going to this next year is like he is working in our waiting and, mm-hmm. and he is sanctifying us and changing us. And, and often the times when we're praying, like, you know, the, the phrase is, you know, Prayer essentially prayer changes you. It doesn't might not necessarily change the circumstance, but it really changes you and and just how much we've all been changed so much by the Lord, yeah. um, and how we are able to view different circumstances now with a different light. And yeah, I'm I'm excited. So wanted to kind of offer up that. Yeah. Yeah. What's the line in Sovereign over us? It says we're something in our waiting. You are working in our ah, waiting. Yes. working in our waiting. That's really cool, Ben. I actually was gonna. Uh, kind of tie off of that similar encouragement. Um, <clears throat> that's really awesome. One, I mean, the, the encouragement that I would have actually hold up. Did I interrupt no. you? Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, I got excited. The uh, the encouragement that I would have too, uh, and again, this is just something preparing for this as well. Um, but I guess it's just a challenge to look back at this past year and really just to, to, to look and see how God has been sovereignly working um, through your circumstances to help you grow. Um, Because I'm kind of reminded of the verse in 1 Thessalonians 4 where it says, this is the will of God for your life, your sanctification. Mm -hmm. And just understanding that, like God has, he he has brought us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of light. Mm -hmm. um, And that as his beloved and adopted children, we are now called to to, to like live that out, Mm -hmm. right? Um, And to to actively live that out. So I guess like the the, the first... um, thing of encouragement is just to look back and see how God has providentially orchestrated everything um, to help you grow and like what area have you grown in and like praise the Lord for that and then uh, just like James 1, 2 through 4 says consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because trials produce perseverance perseverance the perfection of our faith like like these circumstances like let's, let's look at them and be like wow thank you Lord for doing this to, to help me grow um, and that's not to minimize any kind of loss right because one of the things I was even thinking about was like, yeah, whenever you mentioned like Millie's passing earlier too, like I just didn't even know what to say because I'm still really sad about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's not, to, that's not to minimize that. Um, but it is cool just thinking, okay, I, I'm really grateful that she is with the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, and now it, it helps me to long for the return of Christ as well. Mm-hmm. So whenever, whenever Christ does return, there will be no more death, no more dying, no more sin, like no more none of that. Um, and that's going to be awesome. But uh, 
So yeah, I guess I, guess I say that because I don't want us to minimize difficult circumstances because that happens, and the Lord does that to his saints to help us to uh, to trust in him and to grow. Um, but that would, like, I, I guess that pairs with the second thing is, you know, if there is something that you are really worse or, or wrestling through or struggling through right now, um, maybe ask the Lord and see how he is using this for your good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know that's not always, that's not always easy. Mm-hmm. Um, always and that's not always talked about, right? But, but again, how do we, how do we look at these difficult circumstances and how do we look to the Lord, uh, trusting that he uses these for our good? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because even thinking about the book of Acts, like the stoning of Stephen, like that kind of sucks. <laughs> but, you know, we see that that is what the Lord has used as a means to bring out, to advance his gospel more. Um, and we we trust that God is faithful to his people and his promises. So that would be my my means of encouragement. Yeah. And and just to trust him because, Ben, just like what you said, like he's working. He really is working. And everything is for his glory and for our good. And we can trust that. That's great. So. Um. Man, I am, I'm thankful for all the things that you guys have said and really kind of flows into what I was thinking about wanting to encourage anyone listening. Last year, we talked a lot about seasons mm-hmm. and how uh, God works in different seasons. And uh, specifically, we talked about last year how it felt like, uh, I, I at least said, it felt like four years in one year mm-hmm. uh, because we kind of had like a pre-COVID moment. We had a COVID moment, uh, we had being away from each other, and we had this coming back together, and all these different kinds of transitions, and in the midst of all that, uh, God is continually at work, and something I heard just recently, uh, Andrew Peterson was talking about this, and it was really, really good, is that God is constantly redeeming um, this life. He isn't trying to create, yeah, he's, he's making all things new. He isn't trying to make new things. He's trying to take what's broken in the world and make it new, as it talks about in Revelation, when uh, it's literally uh, what it says. Is, I'll, I'll just read it, Revelation 21, uh, 5. Uh, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Uh, then he said, write this down, for the words are trustworthy and true. And I just pray that you would recognize that in your own life, um, because I think, especially in America, we want the new thing. Uh, we don't want God to make what is already new. And I think we often what what we want is what we think is good for our lives. And God says, "No, this might be the best thing." And it might be very difficult, and it might be um, it might be very wonderful. It might be very beautiful. It might be a lot of different things. But I just pray that you would recognize uh, that God has a much larger story, and that He is redeeming, and that He is truly making all things new, even if it's not in the time frame that you want it. Um, as we have shared throughout this time here and about this hour about all the different things that God has done in the life of our church, and it could be so easy to miss it. And I just pray that you wouldn't miss it. And if that you don't understand who God is, that you would start to ask those questions of who God is and why. And, you know, again, uh, that was another thing we talked about last year. The most searched question last year was why. And I pray that you would search and ask, like, why am I here? Uh, And we do believe that God has created each person uh, that is listening to this with purpose and life and meaning and uh, that God has created this whole larger story that points back to himself. And I pray that you would jump into this word and see that story. And, And I pray that for myself that I would jump into this word and see that story um, but yeah, that's, those are just some of the encouraging thoughts that I have, um, in this new year. And so Ben, are you going to share a little bit? Yeah. And so really kind of more in, in, in closing, uh, I have a challenge, a challenge for you all. And this was a challenge that was presented pretty early when we started Colossians. And so it was, a, it was a challenge very early on last or the beginning of this year. I almost thought that. Yeah. Yeah, very, it's, it's, yeah. Very early this year. So 300 some odd days ago, I was like, uh, was looking at Colossians chapter one. And in Colossians chapter one, verses nine through 12, uh, there is this amazing prayer. Like there's this, uh, this amazing prayer that Paul is praying for the body, for the believers. And, and so my challenge would be for you all to be praying this for each other, for, for us, uh, 
for, for our marriages, for our parents, for our children, um, for the leaders, for our government, for, mm-hmm. for everyone. Like, pray this prayer for them. And so I wanna, I'm going to read it. And, uh, and so this is Paul in, in Colossians, starting in verse 9. He says, For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we've not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, and joyously giving thanks to the Father who qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. And so that prayer is just so jam-packed with so many things. You know, it's in, in verse 11, it's asking that we would have the patience and the endurance, like the endurance to endure and the patience to put up with those people, the endurance to go through those situations and, and the patience to put up with those people in those situations. Like, that's awesome. But it's bringing our minds back to joy, like joyously remembering the gospel, what the Father has done. And before that, that, that we would grow in spiritual wisdom, that we would increase in our good works. Like, it, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, just this is so awesome. And, and so, church, my prayer for you all will be that prayer, especially for this next year. And, and, and I want to do a better job at, at being a minister of the word and a person in prayer, as, as that role is kind of defined more in acts. And so, uh, I want to do a better job at that, mm-hmm. at, at shepherding that way, at so, really praying that prayer for you all. And so, um, yeah, and so there's some encouragement there and a, and a challenge for you there, too. And so may we, may we do that. That's great. Well, I think, did you have anything else you want to share, Devon? I think that's basically it. We just wanted to, to wrap up there. I think that's a great way to wrap up. And it's crazy to say it, but uh, when we see you again, it's going to be a new year. So happy new year. Uh, early. We are, we, we are really excited uh, for 2022. And again, I hope that you guys had a great Christmas. I know that we've talked about it a lot. Uh, I hope Advent has been a sweet season for you as well as we continue to long for the Lord. Mm-hmm. And again, we do pray um, that peace be with you. Yeah. <laughs> and also with you. Yeah. All right. Love you guys. We do. Love you. Be praying for Love you. Love you. I'll see y'all. That's going on the blooper reel. Oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) It's just great. It's like, don't lie to me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to play your laugh as the uh, blooper reel. (laughs) 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 Just over and over again. Just be laughing. (laughs) All right, ready? I'll start. Levels. 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 Do re mi fa so la ti. In Christ alone. <laughs> they don't want that. Hopefully uh, a little bit more prepared and a few less ums. No promise there, though, because I know I um a lot. So here we are. Um, it is, and there we go. There's the first one. <laughs> Kicking it right off.